Hey, today we are at Lake Havasu City and behind us here is the replica version of the London Bridge. So Carly and I, September 2017, we had a chance to go to London and we learned about the actual London Bridge and how it was constructed. And during that time we found an interesting fact about how an American businessman named Robert McCullough uh, wanted to buy the London Bridge and bring it to America. And so he did that and he purchased it thinking that it was the Tower Bridge, the really nice one with the pillars and the uh, arches and suspensions, but it was actually the more flat London Bridge. And in order to ship it over to Arizona, uh, he had to bring it over by boat, but he numbered each piece identical to what it was uh, in London and all fit in together. So that is the London Bridge. And in the visitor center, the buildings are all like London and there's the uh, red telephone booths. Try to make it like Trafalgar Square with the fountain. So it's really cool. I recommend checking it out. Yeah, the streets, they named the streets after London places. Lake Havasu. <laughs> it's really busy. A lot of people with boats and swimming and beaches. And today's very hot. It's 33 degrees Celsius. And even for late October weather, that's very hot. Lake Havasu City is a water recreation city. It reminded me of Kelowna, British Columbia, but with a British flair. The city is on the border of the Colorado River. So the east side is Arizona and the west is California. There are plenty of cafes, restaurants, boardwalks, beaches, and a miniature lighthouse on a peninsula near Grand Island Park where Carly and I later went swimming to get out of the heat. Here's the visitor center where they replicate the feel of Trafalgar Square in London, England. You cross the London Bridge to reach Grand Island Park. It was a neat area with RV parks, boat marinas, family homes, and a golf course. Later that night, we found a boondocking site and settled in for the night. Check out that moon. Wow, it was awesome. Yay, we made it to Yarnell, Arizona. So. They're really nice cars. Anyways, we'll check out to see what to do here. All right. Yarnell is a small town of approximately 600 citizens. It is located 150 kilometers northwest of the capital, Phoenix, Arizona. The main street is made up of small restaurants, antique stores, and mechanic shops. I'm not sure what these fancy cars are doing here. They seem out of place. We stopped at this overlook area where we got a great view of the basin below. We were admiring these large boulders on the side of the hill and wondered how they got there.
Hey, good morning. Today we are at Yarnell, Arizona. And the reason why we're here is to pay uh, honor and tribute to fallen Granite Mountain hotshots. So if you haven't seen the movie, 2017 movie called Only the Brave, starring Josh Brolin and Miles Teller and Jeff Bridges and Jennifer Connelly, it's based on a true story about firefighters that were fighting the Yarnell Hill wildfires in 2013. Just warning spoilers now if you haven't seen the movie or turn away from this video. But uh, tragically, 19 out of 20 firefighters lost their lives that day trying to fight the wildfires. And there is a uh, memorial that's just straight down the highway here and we're headed towards that uh, to pay tribute to the Granite Mountain hotshots and their efforts that day. Although it was quite tragic, it's still a good movie in terms of understanding what perils and, and dangers that firefighters have to do. And after watching that movie, I myself had so much appreciation for firefighters and how dangerous their jobs are. Well, I would highly recommend it. Only the Brave just came out last year, really good movie. Um, unfortunately, it didn't do good at the box office, but hey, it was a good action drama flick. Based on that movie, I heard about it and I just wanted to come here and check it out. So yeah, let's go on down there. Granite Mountain Hotshots Memorial State Park was dedicated in 2016 as a place to remember the 19 Granite Mountain Hotshot firefighters who were lost on June 30th, 2013 while fighting the Yarnell Hill Fire. Hi, so we are at the first marker at uh, Yarnell Hill. So as I mentioned, this is the uh, location where 19 brave, heroic firefighters lost their lives in the Yarnell Hill wildfire in June of 2013. This memorial here is to pay tribute to Eric Marsh, who tragically lost his lives trying to protect property, protect people, and unfortunately um, his comrades say fell as well. So, but one person did survive. Once again, watch the movie, Only the Brave. Sorry if I spoiled the basically the storyline for you, but it's you can you can Wikipedia it and you can find out all about it based on true events. There's 18 more of these memorials throughout the trail. It's a four kilometer hike one way and, and then another four to come back. So I don't think I'll be able to finish it. It's about four hour hike they say, so um, I just don't have enough time today otherwise. Carly would be waiting um, because she won't be able to make this trek, but I certainly would have liked to. Uh, I didn't realize how long it'd be, but I am still here and I'm here to pay honor and respect to those brave firefighters who lost their lives. Um, just in my opinion, I think firefighters, policemen, we, we take their jobs for granted for sure. Um, their efforts, they, they do a lot and I don't think we give them enough respect for what they do. Um, I think firefighters and policemen should definitely get more pay out of their job. It's very hazardous, dangerous, and for what they do, I think it's commendable. But uh, otherwise, yeah, this is uh, what I want to do is to come here. Already the trek up here is about 10, 15 minute hike. So can you imagine the rest of the way? Would have been nice to see. But I do have a, picked up a map and it is a, it is a long way up there. So. Not sure if you can see, but it is long, so and it shows where the tribute wall is along with the fatality site. And it is a long way, but, but here to respect them and pay tribute. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I recommend watching Only the Brave. After that, we drove 150 kilometers east to Montezuma Castro National Monument on December 8, 1906. President Theodore Roosevelt designated the surrounding area as one of the four original U.S. national monuments. Castle of Montezuma, right there.
one in the room to say the wife said go throw the garbage out and the husband went, yay. Yeah. Um, but we know that they did put things in there. Later that evening, we found a primitive campsite and boondock for the night. What an awesome sunset. <laughs>